Good to know you're still with us. Now, the Senate has introduced its own infectious disease control bill titled National Health Emergency Bill, which is sponsored by the Chairman Senate Committee on Communicable Diseases and Primary Health Care, Senator Chukuka Utazi from Enugu North. And it has scaled first reading. It is important to recall that a controversial bill titled Control of Infectious Diseases Bill 2020, sponsored by the House of Representatives Speaker Femi Gbajabia Mila, passed both first and second reading at the House last week. The House bill had generated a lot of controversy as critics say that some of the provisions in the bill appear draculian and therefore not tenable in a democratic setting. Still with us in the studio to have conversation on this is Francis Chilaka, political analyst. Pleasure to have your company. And uh, I wrongly assumed we'll be having Olamide, but we will now have Taiwo Akinlami, a legal practitioner, join us via telephone. Thank you very much for your time on the program. Can you hear me, Taiwo? I can hear you. Thank you for joining us. All right, let's get uh, to it. I will start with you, Tyra. The Senate version of the uh, quarantine uh, law, quarantine law rather, titled National Health Emergency Bill, has scaled uh, the first reading at plenary today. What's your take on the bill and the controversy it has been generating and how it is different um, from the other one? Well, um, the number one thing I need us to understand is the fact that as of today, the House of Reps has um, uh, soft pedal on the on the continued uh, passage of that particular law, and they have bowed to public pressure to think about a public hearing. I think it's important that I say that uh, often. Having said that, now I think the challenge is there are pleasure, there are two there are two bills. One is already before the Senate, and one is just cropping up. Now, one thing that is common between these two laws is the fact that it is an attempt by lawmakers, the way it has been done all over the world, to promulgate laws that will govern the affairs of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic era. The truth of the matter is that our world has not seen this kind of... Uh, uh, situation in a hundred years. So it might be clear that the present law, the NCDC law, the national health law, all of those existing laws might not be strong enough to address the realities on ground. But uh, And that is a fact. But I think we don't need another law. I think what we need to do is to amend the NCDC law, because NCDC is set up by a law, to amend the National Health Act to amend the Quarantine Act to accommodate the realities on ground. I don't see why we should spend state money, state, state resources, gathering to, 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 to promulgate laws that have very strong anti-human anti rights provisions that take the power of the court away, that forces people, uh, that, that forces people to to, to, that breach people's fundamental human rights. When you look at Section 51 of, 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 of the bill, when you look at Section 47, when you look at Section 17, all of these sections of the proposed of the proposed bill, they are anti-people to a very large extent. All right, I, I understand copies of the bill has now been issued to members, but if I may, why do you think the bill was presented without due consultation? I refer to the objections raised by former Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwaremadu over the non-distribution of the bill to members before it was presented to the House. Well, it's the way we do things in the third world. In the third world, we have no respect for due process. We have no respect for order. Now, why the hurry? Why are we in a hurry? Because that bill is not even addressing the prevailing circumstance. It's talking about vaccine, vaccine that has not been found. It's not that we have discovered vaccine anywhere. Why the hurry? Why won't we go through due process? If, if the bill is talking about palliative, if the bill is talking about the re-engineering of the economy to look in the direction of, of uh, the present reality, of our monocultural economy. If that is the basis for which the law is being passed, 
It will not even have still been excusable that you won't go through due process. We see developed countries, I know we are not one, they have passed plethora of laws within, at, at, within this period, and they have followed due process. Where they need to lobby, they have lobbied. Where they need to discuss, they have discussed. Where they need to negotiate, they have negotiated. The, the end does not justify the means. As a matter of fact, the means pre-exist the end. So that's, that's fundamental. I don't agree that due process should not have been followed. Due process should have been followed. People right. should not feel marginalized because okay. there's nothing urgent about this law. Okay, let, let me, let me, I'll come to you, Francis, in a bit, but let, let, let me look at um, some of the details of that bill. Uh, we still don't have the details for the one um, from the Senate, but there are some provisions in the one from the House of Representatives that has mm -hmm. been described as draculian and therefore not tenable in a democratic uh, setting. Mm -hmm. And one of those mm -hmm. was compulsory vaccination, I think. What's mm -hmm. your take on that? That's section 47. Now, Section 47 talks about compulsory vaccination. I think the wording of the law is, is anti-human rights. You know, I work with development organizations, and that's what we call informed consent. If you come to me, you want me to take vaccination, it is important that you inform me, you educate me, so that I can surrender myself to that vaccination. Now, so you cannot skip that informed consent part, when I do research for different organizations, we make it abundantly clear to the people who want to interview, you know you have the right to accede to this interview or refuse to accede. So it is fundamental. Now, if, if, even if you are still going to insist for the, for the purpose of public health, because of the overriding interest of the public, it is important that it is stated in the law that people will be will be will be in, will be interviewed. People's informed consent will be obtained. You can't do it for children. Children, you can't just go to a school now and give children immunization. Children have to bring consent from their parents, allow them to do that. So these are fundamental things. When you say that the minister can enter a premises. Uh, and um, if somebody is not happy with that, the final authority shall be the minister, and his decision shall be final. Where is the court? Is the minister the exec The minister is an executive. Arm, is part of the executive arm of government. So how is this, how, how are we now usurping the power of the of the third arm of the of government, which is the, which which is the judiciary? So this is this is not right. And, right, and right. we are not in a state of emergency. I don't see the reason for all of these anomalies. An abnormalist. All right, Tyro. Um, let, let, let's. Um, <laughs> thank you. Let's let's come right. to Francis and take a look at the. Uh, I'll be back with you in a bit. Um, allegations um, by the CUPP um, that the leadership of the House of Representatives were given about ten um, um, million dollars uh, to present that bill uh, before the House. What do you make of that allegation? Whether it is true or not, the the, the, the steps taken so far by the House and the Senate um, leaves a lot to be wondered. It, it makes us begin to ask ourselves questions about their integrity and the purpose. But some would, some would argue on the other side of the divide that everybody is looking for a way to contribute to the management and containment of this virus and preventing a future one. How many, uh, how many, how many laws have they passed that is affecting the lives of ordinary Nigerians positively? How many laws? How many laws have they even passed to tell us that, you know, because of COVID-19, for the next uh, six months, we're going to be taking one third of our salaries? How? I mean, you see, when people sit down because they feel so comfortable, they're not worried, they're not bothered. As far as I'm concerned, you know, the, the, whatever bill they pass, it should start from them. Even if there's a vaccine, they represent us. They are our representatives. So we can start the, administering the vaccine on all the honorable members and the senators. Maybe that is the solution. <laughs> We're talking of hunger in the land. We're talking of uh, unemployment. We're talking of people losing their jobs. What are they doing about it? This is where they should focus. We should be looking at post-COVID. 
So, but wait, wait, let's, let's uh, okay, aside from the other bills, but what do you make of that accusation? Is it possible that these men actually took these monies mm -hmm. to, uh, this leadership took the money to motivate members to vote for the bill? Nothing is impossible in this country. So, uh, it, this, this okay. is a country where accountability, transparency does not hold sway. So anything is possible. And don't forget that. So what like, would like, be the purpose of the sponsors of that bill? Let me see how I put it here. What would be the purpose of the uh, sponsors, foreign sponsors, and their interest in Nigeria when it comes to vaccination? You should be asking a question that, how do we treat foreigners in this country? And how do we treat Nigerians? I mean, videos have been trending how Nigerians have been abused in China. Here, we're giving them police protection, giving them siding to move around. What is the value of the Nigerian life? That is a question those in government should begin to answer us. What is the value of the Nigerian life? The government has been going around in circles. We're going to lift the Nigerians from um, um, Saudi. We're going to lift them from Dubai. We're going to lift them from South Africa. We're They've been going around in circles. They don't get any, they don't get any uh, applaud for efforts. When your effort does not materialize immediately, Nigerians are in China. They are claiming they are being abused. What a proactive government would have done was they would have been the first set of people to evacuate. Now, you're leaving them, and I hear they're going to evacuate people in China about, I think, 15th of uh, May. Why? You're looking at UK. You're looking at South Africa. You're looking at Dubai. Okay. So, 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 see, the whole thing is this. Those we have elected, unfortunately, uh, do not realize that sovereignty belongs to the people. And I keep telling people, until Nigerians begin to think and realize that that 1,000 naira, that 5,000 naira a politician is giving to you before the election, you are selling your pet right. Okay, I'm, I'm told we don't have time, but I'll just get a final thought from um, Tyro. Uh, Tyro, quickly, I want to know um, your take on the... There's been some talk, rather, about timing of the bill. Your take quickly on that argument. Well, well I said that we don't need new laws. Uh, there is an, an NSCDC law. Uh, there is a uh, uh, health, health bill, uh, 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 national health law. All of these laws are already there, and they can, they can handle whatever we have on ground. I don't see any reason why we should be rushing to make new laws. All right. I think the one thing we need to understand as Nigerians is that on this matter, divided we stand, united we fall. If we don't find solutions that are original to Africa, we are just going to find ourselves wallowing in the dark. It is important that we find solutions that are critical, that are peculiar, because we are peculiar people, our situation is different. And until we do that, if we still going with the world, the world also must advise us. World Health Organization must advise us to look inwards. Because if we don't do that, united we fall, divided we uh, united we fall, divided we stand. So we must be divided to be able to stand. Thank you very much, uh, Tyro, Thank for joining us on the program. We appreciate Thank your you. time. And of Thank course, you very much. you're welcome. And of course, Francis, for coming all the way down. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, we will take a quick break for our plus reports, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Just stay with us. With President Muhammad Buhari is in the lockdown with the states of Lagos, Uganda, federal capital, many residents within the nation's capital had waited in anticipation to resume their businesses. Plus TV Africa visited Mpape community a satellite community within the Buari Area Council to assess the current situation. Some of the residents expressed their views on the decision to ease the lockdown. Federal government are feeding with our own resources. We are not feeding with our resources. We are only having our own strength to earn our living. So allow us to go and find our daily bread. The palliative they say they bring to Mbappe here. I am telling you how they share it, it is something that every Nigerian is shedding tears. Could you imagine giving 15 little bags of that very palliative 
to 600 people because according to them they are sharing it each uh, state by state. A person like me, I know how much I spend. I spend now less than 50,000 naira to put up my family. And the measures put by the government to that the measures based on the, the relaxation of the lockdown is very people are complying. Some others also criticize the distribution of palliatives during the five-week lockdown, expressing their disappointment at government's failure to fulfill its promises. If they give you food and or some money to buy something to cook your food, they give you law. If you go out, if they catch you, you face the penalty. But without giving somebody money to eat, giving somebody food to eat, you say you lock down. I, I, no, no, we are not slaves. It's what government do. If you food are not see. Not why I see for here. You see this girl walk around and come. They say look that. Me says government help me. I can't come here to stay on Roscoe here. Not anything what government they do for this Nigeria. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. Some have accused the federal government of Nigeria of easing the lockdown for political reasons. They say this is because. There wasn't any data or statistical evidence that there's been a reduction in the number of infections. Rather, the reverse is evident. I say, whether they are playing to public sentiment or not, there is strong argument that the total lockdown is not sustainable. From the total disregard of the directive and social distancing to the controversy over the distribution of palliatives to the economic realities already showing up on major roadsides, on this I refer to young, able-bodied men begging on the roadside because they cannot work. The cost is huge and growing daily. But is the alternative better? Even with the lockdown, a daily rise in the number of infections continue. Some even say the figures could have been more without the lockdown. Which one do we take? It's certainly a strange time to be alive. I will agree with the many who say we need a homegrown approach that encompasses our unique peculiarities so we don't inadvertently set off a ripple effect that could become a burden for our unborn generation. While decision makers continue to explore ways of managing our new reality, we must all play our part. Be alive to our responsibility, as clearly outlined in regards to the ravaging COVID-19 virus. And that is how we will win. That's my take, and that's how we wrap things tonight. The program returns same time tomorrow. I thank you for watching. I will see you soon.